Australia is a country like nowhere else. When you move countries, one of the most difficult things is learning how to fit in. You look to the locals to try and understand their ways with the hope that one day you can be enough like them to not get so socially rejected that they keep telling you to go home. That would never happen in Australia, right? G'day guys, my name's Ross and I moved to Australia with my family during a global pandemic. Since being here for the last two years, I've been watching these local Australian folk, not like in some kind of pervert way. And these are my nine things I've learned about Aussies while living in Australia. First of all, what can worry an Australian? For a start, they live in a country where 20 out of the 25 most venomous snakes in the world live. If it's not the animals, then the weather can bring with it deadly flash flooding or sweeping bushfires. But despite all of these threats to your existence, Australians are incredibly laid back. There are lots of reasons why Aussies take life easy. Whether it's wide open spaces and the love for the outdoors, or being paid a fairer wage. In Australia, there are plenty of reasons not to be worried. Rising gas prices? In Queensland, we're opening new batteries because we have so much solar. Nutters running around with guns. Don't worry, we've got laws to deal with that. The threat of nuclear war. Well, I just hope we're out of range. Sorry, what was that? We've got a third year of La Nina. For f sake, what about my barbecues this summer? Aussies have taught me that you can remain optimistic in a world that is slowly getting We've experienced a lot in the last few years. Australia has been isolated from the rest of the world. Experienced some of the world's harshest lockdowns and natural disasters. She'll be right, but not in a sarcastic British way. When Aussies say she'll be right, there's a genuine infectious level of optimism to it. Would you rather smile on the outside to some sarcastic joke and then cry on the inside when you realise how the situation is? Or would you rather share a smile with your fellow optimistic Aussie, knowing that together we can accomplish anything? I know which I'd rather choose. I suppose it also helps that we live in one of the most beautiful countries of the world, so all the bad things don't just seem that bad anyway. There is nothing better than playing with your language to watch others' confused faces. Aussies love to shorten the English language. Australian is its own dialect. As an English-speaking person, I never expected to be confused when conversing in my own mother tongue. And I also never thought that I'd have to spend my time learning new words just to get by. Now that I've been here for two years, I love nothing better than trying out my new Australian vernacular on other English-speaking people. I now realise why you have to take an English test just to get a visa to live here. It's got nothing to do with promoting the migration of fellow fluent English-speaking people. It's to test your ability to take the language that you've learned for probably the majority of your life, and then to throw most of it out of the window for shortened words that mostly rhyme. Everyone is just as good as everyone else. No one is any better. I think it comes from the natural competitiveness that all Australians seem to have. Being better than someone else is exhausting, and more often than not, it's just a temporary thing anyway. Aussies will naturally want to knock you off your perch if you're at the top. So it's better to just have the mentality to enjoy yourself if you ever find yourself up there. Stay humble when you are there. And don't worry about soon falling to be like everyone else. Everyone in the world is like a field of poppies swaying in the breeze. Stay at the same height and you move with the rest. Grow too tall and you might get your head chopped off. Aussies live in a country with more venomous snakes, spiders, man-eating animals, even animals that just want to punch on with you. Do you want to spend your life constantly looking over your shoulder? Or do you actually want to enjoy your few split seconds on this planet? Living with the threat of danger is liberating, in that it makes you not worry about anything. Suddenly, the little things in life just aren't really important, when the big things, like your life, are just pushed to one side. To be honest, it's just not really as philosophical as that. Just don't fuck around with dangerous animals and you'll be alright. But all the other stuff is true as well. Do you want to work all the time to pay for a house that you're hardly ever in, to go on holidays that you wish you never had to leave, and to spend time with your family that work seems to tear you apart from? In this life, it seems that we're all just trading our time for money. Well, it helps that in Australia, we're all paid much more fairly than the rest of the world. This country tries to value your time as much as you do. Not only do they have public holidays for monarchs of other countries, but also ones that coincide with the aftermath of football matches. And what could be more Australian than having a public holiday just to have a punt on the horses? This is the country of the long weekend. So get used to enjoying yourself away from work. And if you do want to go out and grind your career, then no one's stopping you. But don't feel like you have to. And don't look down on us if we're not as bothered as you. Remember what I said about tall poppies? Have you ever wanted to visit a stunning waterfall? Sure, let's drive three hours. Thinking of visiting your friend in another city? Well, you can pop on a five-hour flight to the other side of the country. Let's go on a road trip. 
Well, in Queensland, you can drive for more than a day and not even leave the state. Aussies teach you that things aren't that far away. The world is a small place and there's so much for you to go and visit. Coming from the UK, you'd feel begrudged to go and visit your best mate if you had to travel more than 20 minutes. And why? The answer is I don't really know. Maybe it's just because of the fact that there are already so many things going on in your life that traveling from one thing to another just doesn't seem worth it anymore. Sorry if your best mate's a bit Earlier this year, a head of lettuce could have set you back $12. Capsicums rarely cost less than $7 a kilo in Coles. And don't get me started on the price of mushrooms. Now I know what you're thinking, and hopefully no it's not, there goes the whinging pom again. But where is this going Ross, you whinging pom? But when everyday things already have silly price tags, you don't actually mind when the good things seem a little bit more expensive. Good things cost money, and more importantly, you should spend the extra money on the good things. You deserve them, and you've earned a higher wage than the rest of the world to afford to buy them. But if you don't want good things, then you can always go to Kmart, where things are far cheaper than they probably should be. And if it breaks down, you can just take it back or buy a new one. Either way, you're still winning, kind of. Men walking round in the tightest budgie smugglers at the beach. People covered in tattoos. Hairstyles from different decades that you probably didn't even think were popular back then. In Australia, the people teach you that you can look and feel exactly how you want to without any fear of judgment from others. In fact, most of the time people will actually congratulate you for your outlandish choice of clothing or the interesting way that you styled any bit of your own body hair. Australians have also come up with their own slang to tell people who might dare to say something nasty about how you look. They'll just tell you to go get for me, this is probably the most important point. You want to live in a country that accepts and celebrates you for who you are. It's too hard to pretend to be someone else. It's hard enough just being you. Those are my nine things I've learned about Aussies since living in Australia. And you want to watch this video to see what shocked me the most when I first moved here. See you later.